Good morning, everybody. So today I'm going to be reading the story called Bear Has a Story to Tell. And I want you to look really closely at the um, cover and tell me what do you think the story might be about. And then also attached to this morning meeting are some pictures that I took when I went on a long walk on a road called Palmer Mill Road, which is um, in Corbett. You drive up Larch Mountain Road, and then um, there's a place where you can park, and there's a road that you can walk down. And a long, long time ago, there used to be a town called Palmer Mill, and people who were loggers, they lived there. And then they would um, do their logging, and they would send their logs down in a thing called a flume, which um, maybe I'll send a picture of that too so you know. And then they would go down to the bottom of the hill and out to the Columbia River. Anyway, that's not what morning meeting is about, but I wanted to let you know that that's where I was walking. And I noticed um, a lot of the things that they're talking about in this book in um, in the forest around the road. So um, I wanted to share those pictures with you. So here we go. Bear has a story to tell. It was almost winter and Bear was getting sleepy. But first, Bear had a story to tell. Mouse, would you like to hear a story? asked Bear with a yawn. I am sorry, Bear, said Mouse, but it's almost winter and I have many seeds to gather. Bear helped Mouse find seeds on the forest floor. When they had finished, Mouse said, see you soon, and tundle, tunneled underground to wait for spring. So the little Mousie went underground because it was too rough to live above ground in the wintertime if you're a mouse. Bear took slow, sleepy steps through the forest. Fallen leaves crunched under his feet. Hello, duck, said Bear, sitting down to rest his tired legs. Would you like to hear a story? I am sorry, Bear, said duck, but it's almost winter, and I am getting ready to fly south. So the duck doesn't go underground, duck leaves, flies away for the winter time. I will miss you, duck, said Bear. He raised a paw to check the direction of the wind. I'll look at the falling leaves. I will miss you, said duck, and off he flew. There he goes. The sun was heavy and hung low in the sky. Bear's eyelids were getting heavy too. He counted colors to stay awake. Three pink clouds, two red leaves, one green. Frog, hello, said Bear. Would you like to hear a story? Oh, I am so sorry, Bear, said Frog, but it's almost winter and I have to find a nice warm place to sleep. The little frog, oh, has to find a place. And the squirrel was, or the mouse was gathering seeds, and the duck flew away. Bear dug a frog-sized hole between two evergreens. Then he tucked Frog in under a blanket of leaves and pine needles. Thank you, Bear, said Frog. I will see you in the spring. Bear leaned against the old oak tree. He stretched and yawned and scratched his belly. I wonder if Mole is awake, he thought. Mole is awake. Mole, are you there? And you'll look how the illustration is changing. So where is that mole? He's way underground. I love these kind of pictures where you can see what's happening on the top and then at the bottom. Mole was already asleep. Good night, mole. Bear said bear with a sigh. Oh, look, now what is he noticing? What's coming out of the sky? The first winter snowflakes began to fall. Many, oh, and then look at Bear. Where did he go? He's in his den. Does this remind you of a book that I read? Um, 
last week maybe? I can't remember. Bear snores on. Many months passed and the sun returned. It melted the snow and it woke the trees. Bear rolled onto the green grass. It's spring, he said. Now I can tell my story. Oh, did he tell? I wonder what his story is. But first Bear brought Mouse an acorn. Thank you, Bear, said Mouse. Mouse was hungry after a very long winter. Welcome home, Duck, called Bear. You must be tired from your journey. Bear showed Duck a shady mud puddle he'd found. Bear placed Frog in the sunshine until he was warm and awake. Frog opened one eye, then the other. Good morning, said Bear. Bear, Mouse, Duck, and Frog waited all day for Mole to wake up. Finally, Mole poked his nose out of the moonlight. Mole, said Bear, would you like to hear a story? Oh. Bear gathered his friends and he sat up straight and cleared his throat and he puffed out his chest and with all of his friends listening, yeah, I'm having a hard time opening this. Bear could not remember his story. It was such a good story, he said, hang, hanging his head, but winter is a very long time for a bear to remember. His friends sat together for a quiet moment. Then Mouse said, maybe your story is about a bear. And Duck said, maybe your story is about the busy time just before winter. I think there should be other characters too, suggested Frog. Like a mole, said Mole, and a mouse, and a duck, and a frog. Bear sat up straight again. He cleared his throat, puffed out his chest, and began his story with. It was almost winter, and Bear was getting sleepy. So, um, in the in the this time of year, so in the fall before the winter is really here, all of the animals they like figure out what they're going to do, and animals like Bear and um, the mole, they hibernate, they go to sleep. And then um, animals like mice and like squirrels that we're gonna learn about this week, they do something they call they adapt. So they gather a bunch of nuts and seeds and they hide them and then um, they kind of go to sleep for a while and they wake up and they eat a little bit and so they don't sleep as much. And then um, animals like ducks and geese and butterfly, they, uh, they fly away. They say, I'm getting out of here, I don't, I don't um, want to be in this cold, rainy weather. And they go somewhere warm. So look at the pictures that I attached and um, see what you notice about how the forest is changing a little bit. And even look outside your yard. You don't have to live in a forest to notice the changes. Maybe you see the squirrels. Maybe you see the leaves changing. Maybe if you do live by the woods, you notice um, animals are doing different things. So have a wonderful day, and don't forget to always look outside and just notice what it's doing out in nature. It, um, I always find that it's very comforting, and it's really amazing and um, to watch how you can always count on it to change. So anyway, have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.